Okay, well, we've got a good group. I'll continue to admit people as they uh, as they arrive, but I, I wanted to start off by saying thank you for joining us today and welcome to the GCC 2023 India Summit, Connecting Employability and Education. Um, I want to first introduce Dr. Kate Moore, who is the co-founder of the Global Career Center and uh, one of the hosts of this uh, summit, along with uh, Naveen uh, Shaw as well. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, pass it over to Kate. Great. Thank you, Matt. <clears throat> and I want to extend my warm welcome to everyone as well for joining the 2023 India Summit, Connecting Employability and Education. In a few minutes, you'll hear from our colleagues at NMIMS and the International Internship Network about their work. But I wanted to just provide a bit of context about who the Global Career Center is and what we do. Uh, then uh, a short overview of the next few days and few hours ahead. And then finally, a, a brief um, celebration of our uh, collaboration in India and from India and within India as well. Um, so to start, um, the Global Career Center uh, is a uh, specialist organization. We partner with universities and colleges around the world to develop and deliver internship programs and employability services that are connecting students to global experiences, and those can take place online, on site, and in hybrid formats. We love the work that we do. And although the pace of change has accelerated over the past three years, we've always been responsive to the changing world of work and to help bridge that gap between employability and education. That is why we're so excited to have this conversation with all of you over the next few days, an opportunity to really delve deep into how the world of work is changing and how best to prepare students and ourselves for that change. Also an opportunity to hear perspectives from host employers or supervisors um, and students as well as alumni about yeah. that changing world of work and the work that we all do together to connect oh. education and employability. So today you'll have a engaging keynote, a, a lively panel, and then some wonderful words, words, <laughs> or words from student um, speakers, um, as well as an opportunity to share your thoughts and questions along the way. Tomorrow, we'll have a showcase of different products and services and programs and opportunities to engage. And that should be a really exciting, kind of a, even maybe a bit overwhelming as we'll be looking at a range of different types of programs and also be doing a bit of a travel around the world to different regions and countries to hear about opportunities to connect education and employability as well. So again, at GCC, our focus really is on customizing programs with university or college partners, personalizing placement and professional development opportunities with students, and connecting that education and employability. We look forward to the next few days of discussion and the next few hours as well. Thank you for being here. And I also want to really highlight the fact that this is a special uh, special month, a special year for us, because we are celebrating 10 years in India. Uh, exactly 10 years ago, we opened up a Mumbai office, um, have been working with students coming to India, um, having programs uh, from India to other parts of the world, and also working within India as well. And I'll be turning things over next to the key person uh, for all of those activities and initiatives, um, my colleague Naveen Shah, who does a fantastic job. She's part of GCC's founding team, also director of India and South Asia for us. And I'll let her speak briefly and welcome you to the India Summit as well. Over to you, Naveen. Thank you, Kate. Uh, I think you have been too humble and nice to introduce so beautifully, and thank you for introducing GCC so beautifully. Um, and 
let me just start by a little bit of a thanks to all of our partners and especially NMIMS and Mina there. Thank you so much for this continuous support. And let me just delve straight into what DCC does in India. Uh, India by itself being a very complex, quite vibrant and diverse by its culture, it has always been an intriguing destination for students to visit and learn something which is very traditional yet modern filled with challenging experiences to become a better, stronger, confident, with the most asked employable skills today to become a global student or an employee. Pre-placement meetings are one of those which we do in India, which are quite different from other GCC locations. We focus on understanding the purpose for interning in India or abroad, both inbound and outbound students, and what cultural difference means to the students where every student's must showcase the most complex skills during their internship, such as problem solving ability, critical thinking, et cetera. And at the same time, whether he or she would also be open to adaptive, flexibility, challenge situations. Our onboarding, rigorous and continuous mentorship leads to work integrated learning, high impact practices, experiential learnings, directly prepare students to create a pathway to become employable ready. Our students are asked to understand the social and cultural norms when working with different communities. It is a collaborative effort from the supervisors who definitely are going to be talking today, GCC local coordinators to handhold the student through the internship process. So it is GCC who acts as their mentor, the coach, and keeps regular check on the student's work, navigating through the entire system. We provide structure and support on the ground for work navigating through both the students and the supervisors. Students are always nudged to inquire into current issues while integrating within the communities and probe to analyze both global and local perspectives. Networking becomes the key element of learnings. We believe this will help in building the trust and creating a sense of oneness or belongingness amongst the community and the students. We encourage our students to become an observer which builds strong skills and competencies such as critical thinking, team building, negotiation skills, and networking. Other side of this experience is when a student comes to us with such greater impacts created on their lives that they want to become the immediate change makers to issues and challenges seen in front of them. GCC's vision is, is to build a structure of tools for students to demonstrate global competence to employers and provide opportunities that will maximize students' chances to move ahead, taking innovative and visionary approaches and lifelong learnings. I know this is very uh, text oriented, but I think this kind of summarizes what our students do while they are in India. Um, and I, we will take it much further during the day today in the next couple of hours and tomorrow, tomorrow as well. Thank you. Um, I think now it's time for me to introduce a most important person who has been our collaborator and also um, kind of a great support, as I mentioned, is Mina Saxena from NMIMS. Uh, just to give a brief uh, kind of a background of Mina as to what she's been into before she even got into uh, NMIMS and what accolade she passes on. Uh, Mina Saxena is a senior management education professional with over three decades of experience. She is currently director of international linkages, NMIMS deemed university. In this capacity, Mina provides leadership to help transform NMIMS university into a global campus in terms of its teaching, research agenda and strategic engagements. Meena arrived at the university from the Indian School of Business, where she worked for over nine years with research centers, Center for Teaching, Learning and Case Development, and Center for Leadership, Innovation and Change, and departments of faculty and research and alumni relations. Under Meena's leadership, CTLC facilitated the writing and publishing of, of over 150 case studies on Indian business practice and trained over 250 faculty through case workshops. These cases have been published by Harvard Business Publishing and Ivy Publishing, the two leading publishing houses in the world. Prior to joining ISB, she served as the Vice Principal of Management and Commerce Faculty at Jaihind College, Mumbai. From 2001 to 2004, she was Assistant Dean 
founding member of B School for E-Commerce, the Bombay School of Business, Hyderabad Sin National Collegiate Board. Over to you, Meena. Thank you, Naveen, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, and uh, wonderful and delighted to be a partner of the Global Career Center. I presume this is your first uh, India summit and we're glad that we are partners, absolutely. It's been an absolute pleasure working with Dr. Kate Noor and Naveen Shah. Our partnership is now over four years. Uh, now, you've heard a lot about what Global Career Center is doing, but maybe you would like to know why would universities like ours, a large university like NMIMS, which has such a well-established uh, placement uh, office, want to partner with another organization which provides these customized solutions with regard to internships. Uh, I know that they've also partnered with leading institutions around the world. We've had students from UC Berkeley. We've had students from the University of Auckland coming to NMIMS. These are all big names. And why do organizations like us want to partner with amazing work that Global Career Center is doing? And here's the answer. So when one is, um, you know, when one is in an educational institution, one of the things that we look for is diversity. Now, most Indian students lack that diversity. I'm talking about international diversity. There's a lot of domestic diversity because we have students from, you know, various states, 20 states across the country are present at NMIMS. But what one lacks is the international diversity. And if you look at the new education policy, the focus is so much on internationalization, on becoming global citizens, and the list is endless. In a situation like this, uh, leading universities like ours, we're very keen to build students with a global perspective, build students with good intercultural skills, intercultural sensitivity, and so on. And that's where I think four years ago when we got introduced to Naveen and Kate, we said, this is a wonderful way of helping us to get these global opportunities. Uh, and, and, and why Global Career Center? So you, you can probably find internships on your own. It may not be that easy, but probably you may be able to find. But with a global Career Center, what we found was they go beyond just helping you with your customized solution in terms of the internship that you're seeking. And that's what I think uh, is the huge value that they bring. What I'm talking about is the complete experience. So when you're looking for an international internship opportunity, one, of course, they understand what is your need, what part of the world you want to work on, what's the duration, minimum duration, of course, being about uh, eight to 10 weeks, but they also provide opportunities which are semester long. So they have these variety of packages which Kate's talked about, whether it's a hybrid internship or virtual internship. Or this is endless. But what I was truly impressed with is the kind of care and attention that the students get when they are on their internships. Most Indian parents are wary when they send their uh, then when they send their children abroad for internship. It's such a short period from finding an apartment, there being an emergency, whether somebody local would be available to help them during an emergency. You know, finding buddies for them when they are there during the short period. I know because I've experienced that uh, with their interns who come to Mumbai and they come to NMIMS, the kind of personalized attention that they take. Sometimes, you know, youngsters uh, seem to take that for granted, but at least I have seen our students who've gone through the GCP experience have come back so happy. And more than that, the parents have been so relieved that not only did they get this wonderful international exposure, but a lot of other things were taken care of, whether it's your accommodation, it's your travel, your adjustment with the local place. You know, there could be some adjustment issues with regard to the workplace. They provide an end-to-end -end solution. And that's why leading universities like ours and global universities want to partner with such organizations because global internship 
is a different kind of challenge. It's different from working in your own city, working in your own country. You're very familiar with the surrounding. But moving into a totally, completely international environment, from visas to all of that, I think we can't take that too lightly. And, 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 and it involves a lot of work. And we're really blessed that we have the Global Korea Center as our partner, because a lot of our schools, whether it's the School of Economics, the School of Engineering, the School of Commerce, Pharmacy, Science, huge variety of roles that are available across the spectrum. That's another advantage. One-stop shop, which takes care of all your requirements. What else do I want? So, you know, and many of our uh, placement coordinators have been actively working with the GCC and helping their students get these kind of wonderful opportunities. I don't think the numbers are very large. We're still in the early days because, you know, we had the COVID for two years and that was quite a dampener. And during that period, GCC came up with these, um, you know, virtual internships and our students benefited out of that. So absolutely delighted that we have such a wonderful organization, which given the new education policy uh, has made the whole task of globalization, building global citizens, building all these intercultural set. Uh, you know, intercultural skills, and uh, you know, they've kind of so streamlined it. It's it's such a smooth flow now. So uh, I'm glad uh, that you know several of you have joined the session, and you're going to listen to wonderful speakers and lots of people sharing their experience. So wishing Naveen and wishing Kate um, uh, uh, the very best on this first uh, India summit, and of course on the completion of ten years. I didn't realize that you've completed a decade in in India. That's absolutely wonderful. Hearty congratulations. And of course, kudos to Naveen and her team on the wonderful work that they're doing. So all the best for the summit and, 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 and we're really enjoying being your partner. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mina. Really um, appreciate the partnership, the kind words, and the celebration of a decade in India as well, too. So thank you, thank you, thank you. NMIMS is a valuable partner in so many ways, and certainly as a convening partner for this particular event. I also am pleased to get a chance to thank and also introduce another important partner for this event, our technical partner, the International Internship Network. And I'll hand things over to Matt Burns to share a bit about his organization as well, of which GCC is a proud supporter and member. Thanks, Kate, and thanks uh, everyone for joining us today. I know it's uh, it's probably towards the end of a long day in India, and it's the start of a day here in North America. And I'm so glad that we can uh, reach across the globe to uh, to interact. So uh, my name is Matt Burns, as Kate, Kate mentioned. I'm uh, the founder of the International uh, Internship Network, and so we are just that. We're a network of internship providers and uh, Global Career Center is, is really the keystone of, uh, of our organization. Um, they are uh, it's kind of the poster child, if you will, of what we like to do. Um, so GCC uh, connects uh, students, universities, and employers and provides all the services at the, at the location of the international internship. And that's what we're trying to do uh, across the globe is connect students, um, providers, universities, and employers around the world. And so we are uh, slowly but surely building the network. Um, and part of that is we're actually having a conference in Indianapolis in the U.S. in June, June 13th to the 15th uh, of this year. Um, and it's at the Indianapolis, uh, sorry, Indiana University, Purdue University in Indianapolis. That's a, that's a mouthful right there. Um, so if you have a chance, uh, anyone that's online, uh, if you want to find out more about the uh, conference or about the uh, our network, uh, you can visit our website, internship-network.org, and uh, you can find out more, and you can reach out to me. My address is matt, M-A-T-T, at internship-network.org as well. And uh, so I'm I'm thrilled to be part of today's session. Uh, it does make me laugh a little bit that I'm the uh, sort of the technical support, but so far so good. You know, my fingers are crossed. Everything seems to be going well here in Zoom land. And um, so uh, without further ado, I think I want to pass it over to the next portion of our program. And we're lucky to have uh, Mr. Seth Ahmad Sharif, uh, who's going to deliver a, um, a talk on how is the world of work changing and preparing the new world of work. 
So Seth is a delivery director at Boston Consultant Group, uh, where he leads software implementation and support teams managing a large portfolio of BCG software products and custom products. Over the last six plus years at BCG, he has created new tech capabilities to strengthen the firm's offerings and client impact. Prior to BCG, he was with SAP, managing cloud portfolio for East and West of India for products like Success Factors and Ariba. Overall, with 23 plus years of industry uh, experience, he has worked extensively in ERP, CRM, SCM, and HCM systems during this journey. And he has been responsible for creating and managing high performing teams and businesses. And he is extremely passionate about people development. Seth is a recipient of the prestigious BCG Award for holding its purpose, uh, grow by growing others amongst others, uh, amongst other um, uh, goals. So without further ado, uh, please welcome Seth. Over to you. Thank you so much, Matt. Really appreciate it. Hope uh, you, can, you can hear me well. Yes, we can. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and, and thank you so much, Kate, Naveen, for this opportunity. It, it means a lot. Um, and I understand that this is a fairly diverse group. Uh, I, I do believe that we have people from, from uh, data science, from STEM, uh, and, and all the way to liberal arts um, in this forum. So uh, one of the attempts that I have is to keep this um, you know, kind of relevant for everybody within the group. Uh, so you know, when this opportunity was presented, I was wondering, what would be a good takeaway given that we have less than 20 minutes together? And probably one of the things I, uh, you know, which, which dawned upon was saying, what is that I would have wanted to hear, you know, 23 years ago when I started my career, my journey, uh, what would have helped me at that point uh, in, in shaping and, and crafting a career that I would like, right? I think, um, so everything that you would see and, and hear in the next, uh, 20 minutes is possibly a summary of that journey. It's a collective sentiment of a bunch of organizations that I have been uh, part of. And I think I've just been fortunate enough that um, I had the opportunity to manage fairly large teams. So everything that I have seen coming in from, let's say, the, uh, the, the uh, junior talent or the young talent that comes in the system and how they kind of progress, I think uh, just trying to see how we could best help them and, and um, navigate you know, through their through the journey. So, um, just as you know, to to be cautious of our time, uh, as part of the agenda, I'm looking at three critical things. One is uh, many a times we don't, um, especially early in your careers, I think we don't understand the correlation between how does your career progress versus the skills uh, needed, right? I think we we generally tend to uh, lose out on on this mapping or have this loosely built. I think that's that's one thing which I could I could share uh, from from what I have seen. Second is uh, given the diversity here, I, I thought we could focus more on some of the behavioral competencies that's needed, uh, while the technical ones or the core competencies, if you can call it, uh, are very specific to the job and and the profile that you are in. And uh, last but not the least, I thought we could spend some time uh, in summarizing, you know, what are the thoughts for for specifically for a new joiner in terms of types of organization, what they should look for, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, I'll, I'll definitely try and save at least about four or five minutes for questions. Uh, do, with me, do bear with me till then. Um, this is uh, probably a, a good view. What you see on the left is an hourglass. Um, is a good view to understand uh, your career. One, obviously, it's a, it's a rush against time. Um, most of us would, would see it that way. But more importantly, what you would see is, I think, look at this from three parts, right? One is the, the bottom part of the R glass is where you would typically start your journey, um, where you have a lot of breadth in terms of you have opportunity to, opportunities to explore, um, you know, different career paths, uh, you know, understand different spaces. Like, let's say, if you take an example of software engineering, uh, you would probably want to explore spaces like DevOps, like core infrastructure, uh, mobile development, so on and so forth. Uh, things obviously are less forgiving, uh, or rather more forgiving at that stage uh, when you uh, start your career, and and you would find a lot of support coming in uh, at, at the bottom part of your career just when you start the journey, right? As you grow up, I think uh, when when you're typically between the the two and four year four year mark is when 
there is an expectation that you have identified a particular core skill and there is an expectation that you would deliver something in a team construct, right? We may not be able to hold all the weight on your shoulders, but you are able to deliver something within the team, right? Uh, things get a little different as you move uh, further up, which is typically between the four to six year uh, mark, where there is a, a, a very clear identification of a, of a skill. Uh, you're able to manage work almost independently. And at the same time, you're able to manage stakeholders, be it your clients, be it you know, other team members and so on and so forth. So that's classically where you know, the next stage is where you reach the, the, the narrowest part of the R glass is, is when you are at the peak of your skill, right? And that's, uh, and, and, and the, the timing that you're seeing here is, again, most commonly, this is the timing that you would see within an organization. This could change, uh, like some parts of BCG would apply this too. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, every organization has has a, a different way of doing this. But this is a, a good sense to carry uh, in and and measure progress of saying where you are and how much do you know, right? The uh, the the center part of the R class. What you're seeing is is the, like I mentioned. This is where you actually get to the lead level. Uh, you have a core skill that you hold on to. The upper part of the R glass is slightly different, where you're getting more and more into management roles. Starting off, let's say, at the, the 10 to 14 years, typically is where you expect somebody to have, let's say, a managerial uh, skill, where there is project, project management, there is people management. There is also a certain expectation, depending on the organization, on uh, commercialization or business development and so on and so forth. Right. Um, moving further up, is, is where you would see uh, expectation of you managing certain managers. So that means your, your, your span of control becomes much larger. Uh, you may not be associated to a particular skill and you might have this opportunity or the expectation is you are managing multiple people coming from different capabilities, right? And uh, as as you go further high, uh, higher within the um, you know within the pyramid is where you're seeing yourself being uh, let's say director or similar positions, uh, where obviously there is responsibility of a PNL. Uh, you know you're managing a fairly large business unit or a business itself, uh, plus a fairly large span of control. Uh, you would have a fairly large span of control. Yeah. So this is typically how uh, you would see your career progression. Again, this is purely coming out of my experience of what I, I have uh, seen in this journey. Um, I hope this helps just understanding at what point do you, um, you know, you want to uh, understand the milestone that you have achieved in saying, yes, I'm, you know, if I'm in this four to seven year bracket, how well do I have a particular skill and how well am I celebrated for that, right? Uh, you would also see this R glass in, in some sense as a snake and ladder game, right? Um, I mean, it's it's a very loosely linked analogy, but I think it 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 helps just to understand that if you're fairly early in the in the game, uh, maybe switching your career tracks is a lot more easier. As you go higher, it becomes more and more expensive, right? I think that's that's the other piece um, that we should understand as well as we move forward. Now, uh, given the diversity here, I was thinking that what are these set of behavioral competencies that one should have, um, and and, and the, the good news is these are uh, things that you could continue to grow, continue to uh, learn as, you know, depending on where you are, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need a specific forum. You could do this in your personal capacity uh, with your friends, with your family, right? Um, and, and these are some of the aspects that I feel uh, most of our, our new joiners and, and as their career, as, as they progress through their career, I think these are some pieces that we don't um, kind of emphasize or focus much. Uh, you know, some of them could seem fairly uh, straightforward and, and one could feel that I know it all. Um, but I think there is this, this is a muscle that, uh, you know, each one of us need to develop and, and continue doing it um, for a fairly long time. Uh, communication uh, can't stress enough. It's the ability to your, your listening skills, your understanding, your articulation, um, all of that, that that comes in. How easily can you convey using simple words, convey more with less? All of that is, is part of your communication, including written, right? Um, how inquisitive and curious uh, are you through the, through the process, right? Uh, the, your ability to learn something fairly quickly. And this is something that kind of fades over time. Do not allow these muscles, muscles to die down, um, uh, you know, and hence I wanted to just bring this up uh, and have this shared with you. 
how much of authority do you need to work on something? Can you work with the influential capacity, right? That's, that's the other piece that I have seen uh, where many of us kind of uh, fail out. Uh, and as we grow within the careers, we'll, we'll always tend to lean on the authority and say, that's the power I have and, and that's what should work, which probably is not, uh, is, is not what, where the world is evolving. So you might want to revisit and, and look at that. Uh, the aspect of accountability and ownership, how dependable you are, um, you know, with, with the assignments and, and, and tasks and the work that you have taken, I think uh, determines a lot of things. Um, team player, I mean, do you win as a flock uh, or are you a gladiator who can, who can make things work? Uh, that determines how far and how long do you go. Uh, time management, um, obviously, I mean, uh, with at least with a with a new generation, not though not generalizing it, I think this is one piece that we tend to struggle. Uh, but I think uh, we can't stress this enough: uh, the aspect of punctuality, aspect of um, you know over communicating if if you're not able to deliver something, so on and so forth. I think that's the part of time management. Uh, again, depending on where you are in your career, each of these aspects could be needed in different degrees. Uh, but but this could this could be a good starting point for you to say uh, am I doing uh, or do I do I know these competencies and am I practicing them uh, more cautiously right um, courageous is is about your ability not only to answer uh, questions your ability to uh, say no when I can't do it your ability to you know um, in in some sense. Uh, question the answers, right? So I think I think many a times we we tend to follow uh, what comes our way. I think I think that's that's the aspect of uh, being courageous, um, and and obviously your ability to to drive and moderate, right? These are some of the uh, competencies that I have uh, observed and and something that I, I felt we should have this listed. Obviously, it's not a it's a, it's not a uh, extremely exhaustive list. Uh, there are more, but at least this is a good starting point, right? Uh, Moving further, uh, maybe again, this is again a, a collective sentiment coming in from the from the past, and hopefully you find this helpful. One is I have seen a lot of um, you know uh, freshers, new joiners actually aiming for a particular company and saying I need to be in this organization. Uh, maybe that that strategy um, very often would, would lead to you know heartbreaks and and so on. What you should have is a sense of saying which industry you want to be in or what type of companies you want to be in, right? Uh, which, which I think uh, is, is a good starting point and, and having a sense of direction to your own career. So which is, which is a good place to be, probably not a very specific organization. There are a lot of factors that are beyond uh, your control where um, what, what defines whether you could be or could not be in that organization. And that ideally should not lead to uh, you know, a sense of heartbreak. Second is, uh, in some sense, linked to the first point, um, is, is, you know, when people have an aspiration of saying that I want to join a particular size of organization, uh, I would suggest that size of organization has less relevance. Try and look whom you're working with. Do you have a good mentor? Do you have a good coach? You know, uh, because you are absolutely at the bottom part of the R glass, and that gives you a great uh, flexibility to, uh, to learn, make mistakes, uh, course correct along the way and what you need is a good coach somebody who's who's um, uh, like I said probably less forgiving uh, through the journey and and help you guide and and, and grow right um, the third point I think is is uh, kind of critical as well especially again early in your career try and look for a revenue center and and let me just double click on that more often um, what happens is when when you have a particular skill ensure that that skill actually generates the revenue for the organization. Uh, take an example of, of some great data analytics work that you would, you would potentially be doing. And let's say you are an expert when it comes to Tableau and, and Power BI and, and so on. These are tools. Um, and, and you are doing this for, let's say, an automobile organization. We know for a fact that automobile organization doesn't sell um, you know, data analytics work. They're using it so that it actually acts as an enabler for their core business. Try and find the organization which actually sells and makes money out of your core skill. That's the revenue center. Uh, the switch from a revenue center to a cost center can always happen. That switch is easier. The vice versa is, is generally difficult. right? If you're a designer, there is a likelihood 
uh, of you being associated with, let's say, for example, a Leo Burnett, uh, which is an advertising agency, uh, you, you, your uh, CV would actually hold a lot more weight than you working for any organization which has a design team or which needs a design team, right? So that's that's the aspect I would say early in your career. This might seem a little hard uh, because the 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 uh, expectation from from these revenue centers could be uh, fairly high, but I think it's it's worth passing through that rigor and coming out of of the other end of the tunnel, right? Um, the fourth point, um, I guess, uh, you know, is, is true uh, through your college life and, and even after. Uh, you would find teachers in different shapes and forms. Um, they, they definitely teach you what, what you should be and what you shouldn't. Uh, be open to embrace it. Be open to learn from um, any of these spaces. Uh, of course, not at the compromise of your own personal self, but um, you know, the, the, depending on where you draw the line, that's that I have seen, that's where the learning stops. So, um, I think that's, that's one of the piece, uh, which I would like to highlight and, uh, yeah, cool. the, the, the last but one point actually is, is interesting. Um, having been in the industry for about 23 years and, and what Matt mentioned about ERP, CRM, supply chain, this is, uh, enterprises, source planning solutions and so on. What I have seen over time is technology has changed at least tenfolds, right? What hasn't changed is the core business. If I look at an a invoice or a, or a bill today, the components of an of a invoice hasn't changed in, in the last 20 years, right? The way in which it can be uh, generated, the ease in which it can be printed has changed tremendously. So the core business hasn't moved uh, extensively. So do stay in touch with the core business. It's very easy for us to say that I associate myself with the technology, but understand that technology is always an enabler and not probably um, the core business itself. So um, that's that's what I mean by uh, core business remains constant and, and tools and tech keep uh, evolving. Um, the last point, again, uh, not the least, but is, is the ability to identify yourself with a core skill. If you are a software engineer, if you are a data science, um, you know, if you're a data engineer today, right? Identify yourself with that core skill and the impact you, you deliver to the company or the team that you're working with. Associate yourself less with the, the product that you're working on, the project you're working on, or the technology that you're associated with. Usually, you know, there are decisions that are taken within organizations which could, you know, which could be in the favor of the product. Or, or may not be in the favor of the product, uh, which, for which you may not be fully responsible. And you would not get into a, a, a space in saying that I'm irrelevant today because the product is not, uh, is, is not, does not have the necessary investment or does not have the necessary growth, uh, is something that you would um, you know, want to be watchful about. So always identify yourself with a core skill and say, this is a skill that I, I deliver or I contribute to a, part, to a particular product um, depending on where I am or, or, or the organization that you are in. Yeah, um, I don't know how we're doing on timing, but just wanted to check, uh, Matt, uh, if if there is room for questions, happy to take that. Uh, well, thank you very much, first of all, for your presentation. It's been really uh, thorough, and I wish I had somebody like you uh, when I started my career, quite frankly. Um, I guess I have, I have one question. So since we're talking about internships, um, what what are you seeing um, within your organization or the field as a whole uh, when it comes to internships and for students kind of getting a sense of the industry that they're looking at? Um, are, you know, how, how valuable do you think that experience is? Oh, absolutely, Matt. I think it's a it's a great place to be. Uh, I think what's important is to is to in some sense call out uh, what exactly you're looking out for. Uh, many a times we have seen internships being fairly open-ended, uh, or at least ask for internships being fairly open-ended, which which makes it difficult to place um, people. Like let's say, and, and I'm sure it's 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 true for many organizations. But just speaking for BCG, I could tell you that the moment you say data analytics, or you say you know I'm looking at uh, data science, you would have if not more at least about 15 different teams which do different things, but still use data science, right? So so just being uh, in some sense clear in saying that you're passionate about certain spaces, I think would, would definitely help in 
uh, navigating and, and identifying the right set of people where, where you want to work with. Fantastic. Fantastic. So I, I in the um, I'm just looking at the time. So I think we're at uh, and we've got a busy schedule. So I think we're at the end of this uh, part of our program. Uh, but I do want to encourage people. Um, maybe you can reach out either through Naveen or to Kate. Um, if you have any any further questions of Seth, then they can pass those along. And Seth, feel free to feel uh, to put any of your uh, contact details or whatever in the chat box, uh, whatever you're most Absolutely. comfortable with. But uh, once again, uh, thank you very much. I, I found it really informative, and I'm going to throw it over to Kate, um, who has uh, who has uh, is going to bring us to the next part of the program. Thank you. Absolutely. So Thank much. you so much. Thanks so much, Seth. That was fantastic. A really um, valuable and tangible um, examples of how we can help repair and how the world of work is changing as well, too. Before we move, <clears throat> before we move into our panel, I, I am going to share with with a uh, with attendees a Padlet um, engagement exercise. We're going to keep this open, um, and uh, what it is, and I'll just put the link in the chat first. And then I'm going to share my screen to share with you um, what it is. I'm sure folks are aware of Padlet, but it's one of my favorite tools that has come up um, during the pandemic um, and uh, one that has been utilized um, quite a bit since, actually. So that chat uh, in the chat, it'll share, take you to a screen um, that is our shared whiteboard. Um, it's an opportunity. Um, for us to all capture throughout this day, and we'll have one for today and one for tomorrow, to capture throughout the day some of those questions or ideas or thoughts that come up. So feel free to ask um, questions here. I was, um, we populated this with some questions that people had asked during their registration. And Seth did a fantastic job of capturing, not getting a few of these things all um, sorted, right? Thinking about that recent graduate advice, thinking about how the core actually does help um, you prepare for changes in economy and recession and other things as well too. Um, so I do appreciate that so, so much and uh, wanna give folks just a chance to know that this Padlet is there, encourage you to continue um, upvoting or liking other comments that come up. Um, in addition to that, um, continue to ask questions here and I'll be monitoring it, monitoring it to kind of bring us to a close at the end of the day to capture thoughts that come out of the summit today and tomorrow. And um, also to help guide some of our uh, Q&A with our upcoming panels and students as well. So with that, I'm going to stop share, encourage you to and uh, continue on with the Padlet and then um, hand things over to Naveen, who will take us through to our next um, discussion. Thank you, Kate. Uh, thank you once again, Seth. It was a wonderful and enriching experience and listening to you, absolutely great. Um, the next session for today is focusing towards what are employers looking for globally and locally? How has that changed and how is it changing? And I think we have an absolutely great panel to kind of talk about that from their own experiences. And so I would like to uh, call upon uh, Dr. Nikhil Gala. And briefly before I kind of bring him on the floor, I would like to introduce him a bit. Um, is Dr. Nikhil Gala is the chairperson and faculty Corporate Relations and Placements at NMIMS University's Mukesh Patel School of Technology, Management and Engineering, Mumbai. In his tenure for more than 15 years, he has facilitated 5,000 plus candidates with job offers across sectors through skill building processes and has been influential in forging industry institute partnerships. He was recognized by the U.S. Department of State for capacity building initiatives and impact made in the Indian academic ecosystem, which led him to be selected for International Visitor Leadership Program to focus on improving vocational education and skills development. Over to you, sir. Yeah, good afternoon and good evening and a good morning as well to uh, people in the U.S. as well right now, North America. Uh, Thank you, Ms. Naveen, and uh, thank you, Dr. Meena, to give me an invite for this particular session and uh, making a part here. Uh, from a perspective that we talk about how the perspectives are changing for uh, employers, whether it's going to be global or local, uh, I think it's come to a point where it's becoming global. 
wherein uh, uh, it's it's a mix of you know expectations coming from both the global arena and the local uh, aspects let's say in india itself uh, with nmim is obviously that i am catering to since more than a decade and a half we have seen a big kind of a change and a transition that is occurring in terms of the expectations that the employers are setting for the fresh grads now i'll be talking in terms of uh, you know the audience being generic so you know let's see how uh, things are changing both at the technology aspects and at the you know the programs which are not you know technology but more of management as well uh, the employers are expecting the candidates to be more of a problem solvers nowadays and not just come back with what they have been learning and this is the biggest change that is expected uh, to be you know supported by the candidates if they are looking forward to get great employments uh yes at mbs tme that i am probably looking at currently uh, we have a entire team of placement is very structured uh, so we have uh, a lot of joint directors deputy directors directors and a team of them uh, who are being given the tasks to create new opportunities year on year uh, obviously we have our recruiters which we call as loyal recruiters and they come on every year because we have been able to cater to their needs and expectations in terms of their skills which is probably technical or non technical but the bigger you know entire uh, picture that we need to look at is that we make our team of these uh, placement officials uh, that they need to go beyond and find where are the gaps now if they don't you know just go ahead finding out the gaps i think we will also become complacent with time and will perish and that is where nmims has always you know been at the helm of affairs in terms of bringing the change and uh, being very innovative with it with its teaching learning processes the pedagogy the programs the structures and uh, a constant change has been always a part of our entire process and this comes obviously with a lot of feedback from the industries uh, if i just let's you know concentrate right now on the top skills or, or let's say top, some top 10 skills specifically which the employees are looking out it the top uh, position is being taken away by problem solving now if that is a problem solving skill which is required how do we bring that kind of a you know a change in our students in our students across all the programs uh, it's all going and, on yeah so uh, the sec the problem solving becomes the biggest kind of a gap today now there the problem solving attribute cannot be just brought as a change overall in a night over time but it needs to be a, you know coming up with time and that is where uh, probably we will look at bringing a change in the kind of mindsets through our teaching learning processes something that we have been really focusing on at nmim is, is how do we ensure that we inculcate this problem solving ability right from the day one when he joins the program and this is where we have been bringing that change in terms of our pedagogy lot many hands on sessions we have been collaborating across platforms maybe it's coursera ibms uh, linkedin platforms a lot of courses beyond the curriculum that goes we have introduced departmental electives with a plethora of choices for the students uh, we have gone ahead to you know have a lot many open electives as well and what are these things helping us to do it is helping me open up a lot many case studies for the students create problem statements for them and they need to come back with solutions now we expect and actually encourage as faculties that you know even when you are getting into pure research the research needs to be not at just the basic level but you need to go on publishing your work in reputed journals with indexes that's very highly recommended so keeping that kind of a and you know pedagogy in place i think we are able to handle or probably face this situation of making our students better problem solvers something that comes as very much second in terms of the expectation by the employers whether it's global or local something which is not changing is uh, resilience and it is only becoming you know more enhanced nowadays because it's the ability of a uh, any employee to face tough situations and come out of it very strongly now that is where again uh, something that we are trying to do is ensure that we push our students with uh, you know tougher assignments make it more uh, a collaborative kind of an effort that he needs to put across cross domain researches efforts that he put across in competitions so indirectly we are trying to push our students to get into you know uh, a resilience mode 
Now, this is actually helping us because a lot of feedback that comes from our, uh, our recruiters is that our students are the ones who have been always there standing up for taking up a challenge. An alumni feedback that we get is also very, very encouraging in this respect. Uh, something that is changing that we feel look at, uh, how are the trends changing? Primarily, when we used to see like a, you know, a five or a six years back, not really too much you know, going back, everything was physically happening on campus. COVID has changed the entire you know, look around. Employers do not just want to be on campus because it can save them time. Uh, you know, doing a lot many online recruitment drives as well. But it is becoming all the more tough for everybody to ensure that you have the best kind of a candidate being selected as well. And here is where we have been training our students. We have a lot many counseling kind of sessions happening. We train our students to, you know, uh, do the same kind of a work, probably not just offline, but online as well. And, uh, you know, go ahead with select, getting selected for various interviews. So a lot many training sessions are happening in the pre-final years of their program. Obviously, MBA being a two-year program is a very small time. That's where our alumni, you know, steps up and, you know, prepares them as well. Uh, so, yeah, these are some of the aspects that, you know, we need to look at and absolutely immediately address them where uh, trends are changing in terms of selection modes. It is not just the technical skills that the employers are looking at nowadays. It's more of a collaborative approach. Is he a team member? Is he a problem solver? And does he have the data analysis skill now? The buzzwords in the market are data analysis, data analytics, machine learning. Primarily, we ensure that no matter all these buzzwords are there, but we want to ensure that the fundamentals are not lost. And only when the fundamentals are very strong, any employee can make it big once he gets employed. So keeping across you know, all these kind of uh, keywords around, we ensure that every student, typically in engineering, if you look at, we ensure that the fundamentals are absolutely crisp, clear. Very first year, we start on with hands-on sessions. We have different modules to take him from a beginner's level to a very high difficulty level problem statements. And only then we can come into a mode where he is a good problem solver, a team member. He has developed resilience and he can be a tomorrow's leader. So I think that's where uh, these pointers needs to be kept in mind by everybody as an employee and uh, future employers at, at any of the uh, colleges that's going to be. So that is it from my side. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It was really great to understand how NMIMS trains the students to become more confident, resilient, and also being there up for the workspace ready. Yeah. Uh, the next speaker uh, that I'm going to be inviting is uh, from, again, from an international education background. Uh, so I would like to invite Ms. Kala Anand, who is the Vice President Global Upgrad Connect. Uh, hi, Kala. So I'll be introducing you a bit. Uh, I hope you're on there. I know that you're not yes. in India traveling. So I hope you can hear me. Yes, I would like to uh, kind of give a brief bio about Kala before she even starts off. So Kala has vast experience in the international education sector on strategic institution partnerships, business growth, coaching and marketing initiatives across multicultural industries. At Upgrad Connect, she drives critical strategies to boost institutional relationships and provide transformational experience for learners around the world. Kala has been actively nurturing career conversations at schools, college levels, and delivered 100 plus career insight workshops for high schools and college students, as well as for university guidance counselors. She has worked at international government and private organizations in India, Singapore, and Middle East. Over to you, Kala. Thank you so much, Naveen, and um, hi, Kate, and hi, Matt. It's wonderful to be here, and congratulations on this. Um, I know you've been in India for 10 years, and I think I've known um, Kate and her team for like five years, so I can take uh, you know, a lot of pride in that association. Um, what I might do is, of course, give a minute uh, on just putting a context of what who's our connect, and I'm sure tomorrow we have more time to talk about it uh, in the international 
education journey. So we are looking at um, study career well-being as integral um, to a student's journey, a learner's journey, because you can't anymore de-link study uh, your aspirations to study with your career aspirations, but balancing well-being as well. I'm going to um, dive in quite directly into the topic um, so we have more time for discussion and leave you with some big thoughts. Uh, Saif's kind of set a lot of the context in terms of the competencies. He's broken it down and he's kind of given you more like a roadmap. And I'm going to come up with a little bit more holistically on what's happening at the global level uh, and how does, how do, when you're looking at global organizations, Uh, while they having a look to have a single narrative uh, when they're looking at multiple um, countries as well. Just give me a second. Okay, I hope you can hear me still. Um, you know, global systems are merging. And I, I want for students, if you're logged in, in, to be very conscious of this. Dealing health from climate change, you can't de-link agriculture from economics. Um, education and infrastructure are linked global politics and energy is linked and we are seeing this that there there are 10 or 12 large global systems and they are interconnecting and merging very rapidly so they're no longer existing in silos right so and hence what's happening the contemporary business problems that businesses are facing they're no longer existing in silos and hence what's happening is functional expertise alone is not going to help, right? So you can't just work in economics, um, just knowing economics. And hence, what else should you be aware of? And I'll give you some examples. I do this through a lot of case studies, in fact, from business across, um, you know, why is, for instance, the leadership of Coca-Cola more aware of the environment impact? Why are they thinking more about environment than selling more Coca-Cola bottles, right? Why are marketing heads of Adidas, for instance, um, spending more time getting cultural perspectives, you know, around the different markets that they are uh, operating in? Why are AI companies hiring um, techies but training them on ethics? You know, why, why is AI ethicist a far more attractive space to be in than just being a techie, you know? Why are advertising companies hiring psychology students, psychology graduates, because they want to move more and more to authenticity in communication, right? So as all these global systems are merging, career clusters are emerging. And I think that's very important for you to understand that careers are no longer remaining in single tracks, clusters are emerging, right? So if you're tech, you can kind of work tech across finance, the fintech, the health tech, the ag tech, the ed tech. It's about how do you work around this cluster with a set of skills, but how do you then eventually having that content, how are you able to contextualize? And I think that's going to be the key, um, key to any kind of a career plan or a growth. I mean, we've had a lot of reports around how is the future of the work is, you know, going to be like? And I, and you know, speakers before me hinted it, but let me just give you some statistics. I mean, literally, hundred percent more oh, wow. of our time is, hello, sorry, almost hundred percent of our time is actually going to go into solving work problems, right? And nearly forty percent plus of our time is going to be around critical thinking, around judgment, around ethical decision making. Right. And nearly 70 plus percent of our time is actually going to use some level of mathematical skills. So, you, you know, some of the some of the way in which this work, future of work is evolving is going to be very important. And hence, it's important to know that knowledge alone is not getting anywhere. But yes, we are talking about competencies. Right. And it's not just skills, but competencies. And what kind of competencies? There's lots of reports, but I'd like to really slot them. Um, and I quite like these four quadrants, uh, you know, slotting that I'm going to talk about. Really cognitive competencies, like the cognitive ones are really how you use your 
um, ability of thinking with the brain, your, your critical thinking, your ability to communicate. When I mean communicate is also um, nonverbal communication, never underplay that uh, as well. Um, how are you, how agile are you in your thinking? How adaptable are you? And again, as I'm saying, how are you able to translate knowledge to different contexts? And this whole angle of creativity and imagination, without creativity and imagination, we can't go towards problem solving. We can never replace um, you know, what an AI could do. The second biggest is really the interpersonal skills, right? The interpersonal skills being um, how, how are you bringing more empathy, right? Empathy within the organization, empathy in your relationships. Um, how are you able to be more inclusive? Right. Why are organizations today, again, in one of my examples, why is, for instance, diversity and inclusion such a big topic for Goldman Sachs, which which is not its core business, but that's what they are working on. How are you able to resolve conflict? How are you able to collaborate and coach? That becomes really, really centric. Um, and the and the self leadership, right, the self leadership which is your self-awareness, your own self-management, um, the energy and passion that you bring, how optimistic you are. Can you, can you actually take control of a situation? Can you actually motivate yourself? Um, how are you able to develop yourself? And importantly, coping with uncertainty. And th this, is, this is some of those competencies that are very important for you to evidence, even when you actually go in for an interview. These are some of those competencies you're going to evidence. And everybody said enough of data. I mean, at the end of the day, the world is going digital. And it's not about all of us dropping what we do and pick up Python and learn all those data skills. But I think what's important is a digital literacy. Uh, I, might not, I might not know data analytics, but do I understand the impact of that data on decision making? I think that's really important. How do you how do you look at software use and development? Yes, that's important. But do I have some level of literacy around uh, the impact that that data is actually going to make on my business? And I think that's really where that contextualization is going to happen more and more. And so what's what's happening I'm touching upon here is that the content to context is what is going to give you true knowledge. When you're actually sitting in front of an employer who's looking at these kind of competencies, a report card of what you did in academics is not going to evidence some of these competencies. It's only going to evidence that you know and you did something which is purely cognitive, whereas there's so many other competencies. And that's where I think immersive experiences like internships and projects. Um, I know there was a lot of talk on revenue, but I will never discount the experience you can have by working for the unorganized sector, the not-for-profit sector as well. These are the ones that actually help evidence your skills and, uh, and also build those competencies, right? And why is that? Because the world of tomorrow that you're going to step in one problem does not have one solution. It's going to demand multiple perspectives and, and there has to be unconstrained solutions out there. So what is important that you invest in as students and through your experiences that whether an internship or any kind of immersion will give you is to hear multiple perspectives and you are able to see the world through this you know, kind of a kaleidoscope of opportunities. And I wanna leave with like five or six mantras which I kind of um you know stick I think handle on to pretty much as I call them mantras for young graduates is I often say don't prepare to be career ready right but prepare to be task ready and why is that you know as as the global systems are merging as career clusters are happening as content is going to adapt to multiple contexts career pivoting is going to happen very very much so for the next Gen Z than it had in the past, right? As I mentioned, you could have a set of core skills and data and you could go multiple industry uh, pivoting as, as you take that particular skill. Also remember disciplines by themselves don't lead to jobs. Just because you did an MBA or you did a BA or a BSc or a BTech, that doesn't lead to job, but the discipline skills do, right? Uh, prior to taking on this role at Upgrad Connect, I was part of, I, I moved to India to set up the Career Services Division for Kriya University, which is a big liberal arts university. And I worked very closely with a number of employers. And Goldman Sachs was, was always, uh, you know, one of our biggest supporters. And when 
and I talked with the Goldman Sachs HR head and they came to campus to talk to students. They, they wanted to hire a history student. And I was really, really surprised because this, you know, it's not about whether you are going to know about wars and what happened in the world, but history gives you the ability to write narrative with integrity. That's what the discipline gives as a skill. So you've got to dig in deeper to see what does management as a discipline give you? What kind of skills are you learning with management as a discipline? And how are we? And it's fantastic to hear NMIMS and what they're doing. But I guess that's what business schools will start to focus on and they need to focus on in terms of what kind of skills the discipline actually gives you. Career success itself is not a vertical ladder. It's no longer going to be lateral growth is career growth. And I want you to really understand this. The, the time when you joined in intern, senior manager, junior manager, whatever, director, that trajectory is changing massively. Your career growth is actually happening more laterally. I have grown laterally. I've, I've had a 20 year old career. Um, I did my MBA in 1995. I passed out from the uh, neighboring business school of NMIMS. I passed out from SPJIMR, but I've had a career growth that's quite lateral that's taken me to multiple countries, but it's, it's what I've enjoyed across different verticals. Techies, we all spoke a lot, we all spoke a lot on data analytics and techies, but I'd like you to leave with this one thought. Techies without human skills can find jobs, but you may never discover successful careers. I think the ability to connect man, machine, and the environment is a non-negotiable one for career success. And I think the opportunities that companies like um, GCC will give you uh, to place you in organizations globally, to have that level of multiple perspectives, to understand how a particular problem translates across different cultures. Um, and that, that is a competency that you should aim to develop as part of this experience as well. And that's what employers are looking at. I often say that it's not, a resume should not talk about um, what you have done, but a resume should actually tell a story um, a story about who you are and why you're here, because eventually that's the story that will get you out of, the, you know, the, lo the loophole that you're in to present yourself as a candidate. Um, I'll stop here and I'm happy to take any questions at the end of the session. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Kala. That was really, really nice. And thank you for taking time off from your busy schedule from Bangkok. I really appreciate that. And I think there are some key pointers that you brought in uh, where we talk about competencies, but we also talk about how lateral growth is very important than going vertical, right? So thank you for that. Um, we will take questions. Uh, of course, people who want to write, ask questions to Dr. Kala, to Kala, can put it out in the chat room and we will definitely have those questions asked at the end of the session. Thank you very much for that. Our next uh, speaker is going to be from one of the GCC I mean, employers, or we call them as supervisors. And there are these next series of three uh, supervisors who are going to be talking today about their journey with us and how they have kind of experienced with our students. So that is something that we will bring in now. So I would like to call upon um, Rahul Srivastav from Herbs Urbanology. Um, I know Rahul is back in Paris there. Thank you, Rahul, for taking off time to just talk to us. And Matthias, hi there. I'll see you there Hello. too. Thank you very much. Um, and before we get into Rahul talking, I would like to just briefly introduce Rahul there. Um, so Rahul Srivasav is a co-founder of Herbs and the Institute of Urbanology. He studied social and urban anthropology in Mumbai, Delhi and Cambridge, UK. His previous publications include an ethnography of urbanized nomads around Mumbai, a novel published by Puffin, and the slum outside a commentary on Dharavi co-written with Matthias Ikonov and published by Strelka Press. He continues to write extensively on urban issues with Matthias with their next major publication signed up with Verso London. He brings his background in anthropology and visual ethnography to urbanology, the practice that energizes most of herbs work in Mumbai and elsewhere. Over to you, Rahul. Uh, thanks very much, Naveen, and I'm happy to also be here with Matthias, who is also happens to be in Paris. Hello. Uh, 
and uh, so we are both co-founders of Herbs, as Naveen mentioned. Uh, we have been working with interns from your group now for several years now, Naveen, and we just wanted to use this opportunity to thank you for introducing us to some really amazing students. And um, uh, we as urban practitioners uh, need a certain kind of profile and that profile is often not easy to get. Uh, these are people who are responsive, reflexive, open, critical, who are willing to work in very difficult and challenging environments. As you know, Herbs is something which we co-founded. Uh, our uh, office is uh, in many places, including in Geneva, in Bogota, but also in Dharavi, where we started. Uh, and I'll let Matthias say a few words about that, about Herbs itself. Uh, yes, so Herbs um, is an urban practice, which is really rooted in the idea of uh, community participation. Um, and we've been uh, starting our journey in uh, Mumbai, Dharavi, uh, about 12 years ago, and uh, developing methodologies which are adapted to this uh, very specific context, but that we've been able to uh, successfully deploy in, in totally different contexts, such as uh, uh, Europe, where we also uh, are pretty active now. Um, and uh, so the, 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 it's true that the interns who come uh, to uh, our office in Mumbai uh, are directly confronted with uh, you know, some of the most uh, challenging urban questions of our times. Uh, and, um, and it's, you know, we've been very lucky to have people who've been able to uh, be responsive, open-minded, and uh, fully willing to engage um, you know, with the population, with the issues at hand. And uh, we are, in fact, right now, as we speak, we're very happy to say that Carl, uh, who is one of our interns with you, he is back in Dharavi right now in our office. Uh, and we are going to be joining him tomorrow from Paris. He also lives in Paris and we, we, you know, we, and we continue working in different ways. So that is something that we really wanted to share with you that uh, a very special batch of students have come through you. And uh, that is something which we are very thankful for. And we just wanted to say that. And uh, you know, if there are any questions, we are happy to answer them. But, uh, you know, you can also look at our website, herbs.net, and you'll get a lot of ideas of what we do. But uh, essentially, our focus remains uh, people-centric planning. And therefore, almost all the people who work with us also have to be sensitive to that context, to, that, to, the, to the idea of uh, having, uh, you know, sort of uh, a relationship with people, which is meaningful, to understand, empathize, uh, to work with all kinds of communities and backgrounds. And that is something not always easy to get. So that's about it from our side. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Rahul. Thank you, Matthias. That was really nice. It was wonderful to see both of you. Thank you for taking off time. Uh, okay. Absolutely great to know that you guys are there working around. And Dharavi always stands and Orb stands as a special spot for us, for our students to work with. Thank you. Okay. Um, Thank, you. Thank you so much. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Next, our next speaker uh, is going to be from a very, very important aspect of, I think, every woman's life that want to reflect and see how it evolves and what is that we really think about when we talk about women's rights and women's evolution, right? So I would like to call upon uh, Seema Syed, who is the manager and a revolutioner for Asta Parivar. Uh, Seema, over to you. And I would like to introduce you before you start off. Seema, are you there? Yes. Naveen, Great. hi. Can you see hi. me? Hi. You can hear me yes. too. Thank yes. you. So let me just introduce you briefly before you take up the floor. Uh, Seema Syed is a fine arts and a journalism postgrad. She is working in the field of HIV AIDS prevention for 23 years. Currently associated as manager with Astha Parivar, a federation of sex workers. Seema has represented the organization at various national and international forums. She writes on topics related to marginalized communities, population, women, and HIV prevention. She is a guest faculty and lecturer at management colleges and other large forums. Also a qualified trainer of HIV prevention, community mobilization, and organization development. Over to you, Seema. Hello, good evening to everyone. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Naveen, Kate and GCC for giving me this opportunity. Um, always thankful to you, Naveen, and uh, you know our connection with NMIMS also uh, goes back. Uh, uh, we've had intern students uh, come in to work with Asta Parivar. So 
quickly when I uh, talk about, uh, you know, what we are expecting as employers from uh, the future candidates, I would just quickly give you a little background of uh, Asta Parivar, we work with the sex worker community. So we have the, the transgender and the sex worker community work across Mumbai and Thane with uh, approx 30,000 sex workers. So, uh, you know, uh, when we have uh, an opportunity to get candidates, so most of the times the uh, so I will be also talking about the perspective, uh, giving uh, my experiences working with the NGO and how NGOs experience when we have requirements for candidates, uh, what are we looking at and, you know, what is the need that uh, we have in mind? So, uh, Currently, uh, after the pandemic, things have changed and it has uh, changed for every sector. And now when I uh, look back and uh, see the candidates earlier that we had started working in the social sector, it was more like a social service. And now, you know, nobody wants to be, um, uh, I don't know if they want to be related as a social worker, but most of the times we introduce ourselves as people working in the development sector. So now it's, you know, it's, it's development sector. It was a traditional way of people working with the NGO, but NGOs have evolved. The development sector has evolved. Things have changed. And currently when we work, of course, we do have a lot of challenges, challenges at NGOs. And when we are looking at candidates as employers, we are looking at somebody with basic, um, you know, the, the empathy working with the marginalized populations, communities that we work, these are high risk. Uh, and a lot of times when um, I get a call asking if uh, there's an opening at Asta Parivar, mostly people want to work with the organization is to, uh, you know, give back to the society. Of course, I mean, uh, the pay scale and everything does matter. But the initial days, if somebody has to intern or somebody has to volunteer, uh, are also looking at the purpose of, you know, that meaningful work that they can give back to the society. So that is one uh, 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 most uh, common thing that comes across. Currently, right now, after again, I'm saying with the pandemic, there is a lot of requirement at the NGO levels also. Uh, we only worked at the fields we had our outreach staff. We do a traditional work where we go out in the field, meet sex workers, meet transgenders, talk about HIV, talk about um, uh, uh, health issues, their crisis, all of it. But right now we are also looking at new talents coming in. Because in the past when we said, uh, you know, the development sector called the social sector had traditional roles like field or uh, volunteering jobs. Currently the workforce, the work relation is being reshaped constantly. That's uh, what my experiences have been. Recruiting and retaining the best talent is what even we are looking. But at times it's really difficult because when uh, you talk, when you say that, uh, you know, uh, as, 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 a, as a person working with us, you will need to go out in the field or you will be meeting the transgender community or you'll be meeting the sex workers. The first thing that comes is, you know, um, a, a little reluctance of whether, uh, you know, if they're going directly working with the sex workers and how or um, how difficult or how challenging it could be. So that, again, at the NGO level uh, brings uh, us uh, to a point where we need to um, um, uh, introduce our work in a way which is not very terrifying or not very scary. So. Uh, people like us who've been working for years, we know it's not that difficult going out in the field or working with the communities or uh, the sex workers. But for a new candidate, it could be very difficult uh, going out, venturing out with the sex workers and working with them. Uh, uh, with the shifting demands due to pandemic, many candidates uh, now require remote or hybrid work. So um, uh, when uh, we have uh, vacancies out, uh, people do ask us, you know, if there is an option, if we are in Delhi and can work for you. Initially, we were a little uh, hesitant of how can a person staying in Delhi work in Mumbai's Kamatipura area. But uh, again, as I said, you know, things are reshaping and we need to work uh, parallelly, uh, reshape our uh, structure, uh, have the interventions designed in a way which can, uh, you know, is as flex flexible for uh, 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 the new talents. So this shift will also likely, you know, it is creating opportunities for organizations to acquire talented individuals and volunteers because um, uh, uh, it is greatly expanding the uh, the recruiting pool also. So non-profits and NGOs now are adapting to this changing work landscape. 
um uh, and then uh, through and what what we can do through remote work there is a, a lot of possibilities now with the online fundraising models there's an increased demand for technical professionals um uh, you know basic things like what we are not good at is like the tech support that the students can offer working remotely or the database administration or even the online marketing or online fundraising and the the, the newest thing the latest thing that we are looking is uh, the online counselors or the virtual counselors so these are some of the positions or you know the talent that we are looking uh usually what we do is hire local people because uh, you know they know the area well or uh, they can be just a call away they can immediately come if there is a crisis situation in the field but uh, that was a thing of past and now if you're looking at people hiring from uh, other states other cities it's that not that difficult it's again um uh, you know uh, like like uh, the non profit organization earlier the, uh, we are we are making this specialized change in the working structure also by improving work and the managerial roles as well um the development sector now is also looking for talent that filled with program leaderships like the strategy i already uh, already talked about the fundraising and higher job opportunities csr partnerships and such so we are in constant lookout for these kind of talent because we may all be very good at the field levels at working with the communities but uh, you know new talents new generation who can help us uh, increase the visibility of the work we, we do or just take us uh, through the social media or even you know tell us how um, uh, uh, we can explore other opportunities so these are the new talents uh, you know this is giving us the opportunity to uh, uh, reshape the work uh, uh, the way we work also and you know that's every sector in the world is increasing at a rapid uh, pace so even the development sector is one of them so with increasing need for fitting into the technological world um the the new need for new recruitment and increase of job roles is one of the reasons uh, why young minds are drawn towards this sector so uh, more and more uh, you know this ngo sector or the development sector is the uh, the need of our and when i do these sessions at the management college i get a lot of calls you know of how we can work with you but the only challenge is the 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 pay um, uh, uh, you know the the salaries that are expected from ngos we are always in uh, uh, challenging uh, facing this challenge of fund crunch so we may not be able to promise huge yes, salary but yes um, there are opportunities with ngo sector the development sector and and i really um uh, you know take this opportunity to invite students from all the management college to explore possibilities in the development sector so i have had uh, the opportunity of uh, you know hosting such wonderful students through navin through gcc very recently and i i realized that these students come in with a lot of empathy they are full fully charged you know uh, very um, uh, excited to work with know the communities out there know the city know the country i'm talking about these international students that we just had we've just hosted and if they can uh, the students from the city from mumbai from our management colleges also i think can be a great asset to the ngo sector and i also take this opportunity to thank uh, nmims because we've had such great um, uh, students interns working with us who helped us develop a marketplace model so you know when we started our resource mobilization and other things they really helped and that that professional touch that is coming from these students is like for us it's a great contribution so yeah these are my experiences navin and if there's anything any question that i uh, you know somebody has to uh, i'm i'm open uh, after the session thank you so much thank you seema uh, i think your experience and great expertise into the field itself is so commendable um yes we will be more than happy to just take questions for uh, seema please uh, people in the chat room if it or chat box if you can just put it out there we'll be more than happy to answer uh, yeah so thank you seema thank you so much for this uh, time taking um, yeah hang on there till some questions come up after the session i'm sure yeah uh, okay uh, now over to our next very inspirational speaker uh, i think who's been doing a great work uh, with in medical science 
And he, he has been devoted his life completely. What a yeoman service that he provides to the community. And here, I want to bring him on board. Uh, this is Dr. Vivek Pai from Bombay Leprosy Project. Dr. Pai, are you there? Yes. Hello. Hello, Navi. Yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, yes. Good evening. Uh, yes, I would like to introduce a bit uh, to the audience first, and then you can take the floor, sir. So Dr. Yes. Vivek Pai uh, is the director of Bombay Leprosy Project. Uh, he has been serving with the communities across India over two decades. He is the clinical research assistant in Department of Skin, VD, and Leprosy Research Society in GMC and Sir JJ Group of Hospitals since 1989. He has honored to be the Clinical Research Fellow in the Academic Department of Neurology at the Royal London Hospital, London. He was nominated as the Scientific Committee Member of the World Congress on AIDS held in December 1990 in Mumbai. He was the Vice President, Indian Association of Leprostol, Leprologist, sorry sir, IAL 2017-2020. Member of the Expert Group of ECHO Clinic for Leprosy, India. Joint Director of Health Services, Leprosy and TB, Government of Maharashtra. Member of Expert Group of National Strategic Plan for NLEP, Government of India, 22 to 2030. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Naveen. Uh, I must, uh, uh, good evening to all the participants of this wonderful summit hosted by the uh, Global Career Center. I thank Kate Moore, uh, from the Global Career Center and Naveen uh, Shah from the Global uh, Career Center for organizing this wonderful summit and uh, bringing people together, you know, for the first time. I think uh, this is a unique uh, uh, meeting on a virtual platform, bringing together the the people who are associated and the the topics that are designed for both the days are really, really interesting and thought provoking. So I thank once again for giving me the opportunity and I and our organization, Bombay Leprosy Project, to be a participant in this summit. Uh, coming to the topic as to how, you know, the session, uh, it was quite uh, interesting and I was pondering over it. And our association with initially with the uh, uh, with Naveen Shah from the other organization in the pre-COVID uh, period, and now it is the Global Career Center. So this has been a wonderful journey. And uh, through this journey, we have been uh, associated with so many students from, uh, uh, from the global universities. And it was really a uh, uh, very, very exciting and thrilling time that we have been uh, spending with several of these internship programs and uh, initially uh, as we were associated with several interns and internship programs from india but this uh, from the global uh, universities it was a different experience altogether and uh, uh, what we have been looking for uh, during this program is that uh, we need to you know build up several collaborative and uh, teamwork and uh, communication skills and the this uh, academic platform provides an innovation and problem solving uh, uh, methods promotes critical thinking while they are here and we are really uh, happy that uh, several of these uh, interns several of the students who are part of this journey have been uh, stimulated in special uh, critical thinking and decision making, which is more important. See, considering the global uh, scenario, I think that these qualities are very, very essential when you uh, look at this period of maybe four weeks or six weeks or eight weeks. But I look at it from a very, very crucial time in uh, an individual's life. And this is the time spent in a different country altogether, coming from a different university, coming from other part of the world, and then coming to uh, India and into Mumbai to organizations. There are so many organizations. Uh, uh, Seema Sayyad spoke about HIV and then other uh, organizations. So it's a different uh, background altogether. And therefore, we take this opportunity to interact with them, to apprise them about the programs and uh, uh, 
this is the time, this is the platform that you stimulate the leadership skills. It could be leadership skills. It could be global citizenship, what you call, you know, and not thinking it from only uh, internship point of view. I, I look at it or rather our organization looks at it from this perspective. And so that these qualities, when they go back, uh, it may be, it could be even personal development and management skills, because it's a different uh, uh, scenario altogether, uh, even em emotional intelligence. So I think these are different qualities. Uh, when uh, uh, you spend a time as an intern and going beyond the objectives of a particular internship uh, or a program. How this has benefited, I would like to you know, share some examples and share our uh, experience because this is more important. And uh, this, uh, over the period, uh, several students, leprosy is a, you know, it's a, it's a neglected tropical disease. And uh, it's not a, uh, a kind of an attractive proposition at all. So uh, considering the priorities, considering the interest, the, uh, the, the disease itself, the literacy program itself uh, has been looked into. It has been a very, very low priority. But however, we are really amazed when some students volunteered, when students uh, applied, when students uh, looked into opportunities. That was really surprising. And uh, this uh, gave us an opportunity to, you know, to stand up that we need to make them understand about the, uh, the, the background of the disease, why there's a priority, low priority, and what are the, uh, the implications in terms of uh, various facets of the disease. It's not just a clinical problem. I may be a clinician, but it's not just a clinical problem because uh, it's a disease which is, has several facets uh, in terms of clinical, in terms of physical, in terms of medical management, in terms of economic, in terms of social aspects, in terms of several gaps, uh, looking at uh, research uh, uh, perspectives, uh, rehabilitation perspectives. So it has got several fa facets and uh, it's not, uh, it's an, uh, really a multidisciplinary approach. So when a student, when an intern looks at it, I think there are ample opportunities. And uh, these uh, are the opportunities to answer several uh, challenges that are unaddressed. Though the disease has been declared eliminated globally, uh, uh, maybe in, uh, including India, which is one of the major contributors in terms of uh, leprosy contribution to the tune of 59% of the global leprosy case load. So there are ample opportunities while, uh, uh, while you are doing an internship to address so many of these challenges. So many students who have been uh, associated have taken up uh, as it uh, as an academic participation. So they have taken up studies, they have taken up uh, short assignments. And uh, mind you, it's not just uh, participating, but they have gone to the extent of publicating publications of these uh, uh, short assignments, uh, documenting in various journals. You know, I heard uh, the at the beginning of this session, Dr. Gala from NMIMS that they should be encouraged to not only undertake studies, but then publish, document. It is very important that your experience, your association has to be documented. And uh, this exercise itself will prove a chain of, uh, of chain of understanding to so many people who will be looking at it. So documentation, several of the students from uh, the uh, GCC or the erstwhile earlier, the AICC, who have been associated have documented that then uh, fundraising fundraising you know is also an uh, aspect some of the students you know some interested groups for example there was a group from united world college of southeast asia singapore so where it is a global students from several countries and they visited us uh, not once twice thrice in groups they interned with us they were part they were participation in uh, in actual field work, community work, being with the patients, being with the beneficiaries, being with the program service providers. So it was a wonderful enterprising experience. And then going back and then advocating the cause and then uh, supporting the cause. So it's a unique uh, trans, uh, you know, supporting by of, uh, raising funds and then channeling it to the organization where you have been uh, coming as an intern. So these are really, really great contributions from uh, 
the uh, participants then uh, uh, while you are doing this you are again championing the cause which you are associated which is most important and i and we, we we call them as global ambassadors of the business because when they go back to their respective countries they could be from university of berkeley you know navin uh, has uh, uh, had sent students from university of berkeley california university then you have students from other universities so when they go back they champion the cause they are the global ambassadors they represent the cause and they talk about it. and this is most important uh, uh, an outcome of uh, this internship this kind of a journey documentation publication i mentioned this has been very very helpful uh, in terms of uh, 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 documenting your experience your contribution to the cause or rather answering some of the challenges which have left unaddressed so i think this is these are important uh, issues uh, so uh, so all in all i think uh, the uh, the uh, collaborative association in terms of internship is really contributing to the uh, the yeah, understanding of this terminology called global competency i think uh, kala anand addressed these uh, issues and i was uh, really you know my task was made simpler because she touched upon most of these issues which uh, i have been talking global competency for an inclusive in you know, a sustainable world i think this is how the global career center and uh, such a, uh, collaboration is going to help development of uh, uh, of uh, global economic skills so i think these are uh, this is what though these are terminologies though they have been mentioned there but i think by this association global career center and the earlier ones this journey has uh really really you know imparted that kind of uh, skills that kind of understanding and then taking home the message uh not only taking home but then even championing the cause thereafter and uh, documenting so these are real outcomes and uh, this has thrown open uh, a platform uh, of stimulating young minds in and uh, bright minds and then uh, uh, coming into uh, 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 such a neglected areas and then uh, working in this field uh, though it may be for a short period but i am sure that this will ignite the spark this will set the tempo for future career building for and they will remember it while wherever they may be working in whichever part the world the globe is getting smaller and smaller uh, by virtue of your digital literacy uh, she also spoke about that so these uh, technologies is making people come together and uh, though they may be in a different part of the world but they will remember they will take it forward and that will be the true justice to the eventual beneficiaries for which uh, they have been the association has been working and then they would uh, take it further to, uh, to 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 justify this kind of uh, association and i think that is the true meaning of global career center i don't see career career is is for a, a development of an individual but then the lateral contributions which she mentioned these are really really apt terms and this is true justifying the meaning of its real uh, association so i think with these a uh, uh, few words of our experience our association uh, i am glad that uh, you could uh, uh, give the opportunity to express uh in, in through this virtual platform and uh, uh interact with the so many of the participants so thank you very much uh, for the opportunity thank you sir thank you so much i i i think it is so wonderful to hear from you the kind of competencies that you have really kind of laid out there you know and igniting that spark within students has always been there when i have introduced uh, students to your organization or maybe to astha parivar to other organizations which have really created that kind of a very evident and very pivoted kind of an experience for students today i mean just carrying that i i don't deny that if people had to work in corporates is the best experience but working in these social development sectors ignites a lot of experience and spark in the students to go back take to make those changes and that is what is important thank you for very much for uh, giving this opportunity for our students as well 
Oh, yeah. And if there are any questions uh, from the audience, please put it out in the chat room and or chat box and we will uh, definitely ask those questions post all our sessions um, at the end of the talk. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And Hi. our next uh, next session uh, is going to be something which is very much uh, linked or I would say to kind of connect with what the student perspectives are. Now, all this time we were talking about how employers or maybe uh, leaders in the industries have spoken about it, but and employers have spoken about it, but how students are looking at it. And that's what the perspective that we need to get in. So I would like to bring in uh, two students from NMIMS uh, who have been nominated to speak at this forum. Uh, first is Anidya Singh Bandhari. Uh, Anidya, over to you, and I would like you to kind of touch upon the subject, and I would like to briefly introduce Anidya before he starts speaking. Anidya, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Great. Good evening. Um, before Anidya starts, I would like to introduce him. Anidya Singh Bandari is an undergraduate student at NMIMS Mumbai, and in his third year of BTEC data science, he has completed five internships during the course of his degree. His internships were with Case, Niti Consulting, DRDO ISA, IIT Mumbai, and University of Auckland, New Zealand. Let's hear from him about his experiences and future plans and how he is preparing him, how it's preparing him to step into the workspace and the industries. Over to you, Anidya. All right, good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so the move to the future workspace is not going to be a very smooth process. It will take time and different organizations will propel themselves into the future at different paces with different transformations already in progress and a new generation entering the workforce. Organizations are starting to set themselves up for a successful future. This means that educators and governments also need to start preparing students for this change now. Careers that exist today may not exist by the time students of today enter the workforce. Resilience, flexibility, and adaptability will be critical along with understanding of the industries that will best support human skills. Equipping students with an understanding of the skills and you know, business models and types of processes of universities is extremely important. The future worker is most likely to be self-employed and contracted on self-short-term tasks. This will create a gig economy where temporary positions are common, allow, allowing workers to globalize their skills. The gig economy is already a reality for many workers, with about 34% in this way today. By 2023, it was estimated that employed workers are expected to make up about like 45% of the workforce. A gig economy is a labor market that relies heavily on temporary and part-time positions filled by independent contractors and freelancers rather than full-time permanent employees. Gig workers gain flexibility and independence, but little to no job security. Many employers save money by avoiding uh, you know, paying benefits such as health coverage and paid vacation time. Others pay for some benefits to gig workers, but outsource the benefits programs and you know, other ma management tasks to external agencies. In line with the gig economy and increasing dive, drive for flexibility balanced with the fact that humans are still social animals will mean that physical workspaces may go away. Its composition will just change. Co-working spaces will grow in major importance. Technology will be a significant driver of the changing workspace. An impending fourth revolution fueled by concepts such as artificial intelligence, cognitive technologies, and the internet of things will impact the way we go about our work. It is predicted that one in five workers will depend heavily on AI. Machines will, however, never replace humans. Instead, instead humans and machines will collaborate to create additional value for both business and consumers. What this means for the students of today, the increasing emphasis on on STEM curriculum that is based on students to explore science, technology, engineering, and math. It is already a step towards supporting students to be able to cope in a future with workspace environments where there will be a requirement to co-work with technology. 
as technologies such as augmented reality and virtual reality are used more and more in classrooms, the next generation of workers will be ones with the advantages of existing workers who have to struggle to adapt with, you know, ways of working around all of this. Resilience, adaptability, and varied skill sets will be critical along with an understanding of industries that will best support human skills. Equipping students with an understanding of the skills, business models, and types of processes is, again, extremely important. In today's scenario, it is also very important for students to develop a high EQ to help them tide over the volatile fluctuations in the job market. Flexibility and versatility are tools that will go a long way to fire students' ambition and career. As an engineering student, I also feel the need for opportunities to take up a number of internships. An internship is a period where students are trained in skills that they're good at and an opportunity to apply their knowledge practically in industries. An internship broadens a student's knowledge base and horizon. This may also be a reason why the AICT has made internships mandatory for all BTEC students across India. When students complete their BTEC, all of them pass out with the same knowledge and skills. It is just their internships and how they hone their skills, what they do with their knowledge, which actually sets them apart, which is very important in today's day and age. Hence, I feel colleges should go all out and you know encourage students to take up more internships and facilitate the same because it's internships, it's projects, it's research papers which helps them set them, you know, set themselves apart from the cattle class. So with that, I'd like to conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anidya. I think uh, you brought out some salient points. What a student should actually be equipped and be uh, kind of competent enough to be in the industry today. Yeah. Thank you there. And just stay on. I'm sure there'll be questions asked later. So yeah. Thank you. Uh, I would now like to call upon another student uh, from NMIMS who will be sharing her views uh, and her perspective, Ankita Sinha. Ankita, uh, yes, please I am welcome. Yes, hi Ankita. And let me introduce Ankita a bit. And Ankita Sinha is a post-grad second year student at SPM NMIMS and Mumbai pursuing MBA marketing as major. She is a business administration graduate. She, is, she interned in Tata consumer products, specifically in Tata T portfolio. She has been involved in corporate projects throughout her MBA journey. One of the key experiences she had last year was to be part of the project with ABFRL, where she created a brandscape and direct to consumers framework through market research of 40 plus social media brands to enhance their online presence. Now she proudly announces her new title as management trainee for Tata Consumer Products, which she received through a rigorous selection process. Congratulations, Ankita, and over to you. Hi, thank you so much. So um, I think I'll keep it very short. Uh, from my MBA journey, I could understand the importance of doing life projects and getting hands-on industry experience. And that is something that every student should be going through at uh, the current stage. It is something that equips them better for whatever career that they want to pursue. And uh, for me, personally, the biggest gain was that I could uh, expand my learning horizon. I could uh, easily, uh, you know, inspect what my interests are and sort of uh, get some hands-on experience in different domains to understand whether this is the suitable career for me or not. In that way, I could experience a lot of learning and I could experience working with cross-functional teams as well. Uh, during my summer internship in my first year, I got the chance to intern with Tata Consumer Products. And uh, by then, I decided that I would be specializing in marketing uh, during my second year. So I wanted to be associated with the FMCG company. And I was lucky enough to uh, get through uh, to Tata Consumer Products. I was interning in their sales and marketing department. And uh, as uh, ma'am said, I was working particularly with the Tata T Gold portfolio. So as a part of that uh, uh, internship experience, I got to interact with a lot of stakeholders who were a part of this project that I was working on. And... Uh, it happens in a company like Tata Consumer Products, the work is very defined. 
So sometimes there's involvement from the legal team or from the brand team or from the sales team or the shopper marketing team. So you have to be very hands-on. And uh, that was one of my biggest learnings from my uh, summer internship. I got to learn how to uh, be a part of such a rigorous uh, company and such a rigorous process where things are changing so dynamically. And that would not have been possible had I not uh, pushed myself to get some industry experience beforehand. In my undergrad, I was again doing a lot of internships. I interned in the human resources department. I interned in the advertising department. I interned in the social media marketing department. So these were ways uh, for me to express myself as an individual and also to explore my interests uh, in the real world. So um, I believe that there's a lot of learning once students uh, push themselves and get these uh, corporate projects or life projects because the companies are also looking for interns who want to uh, sort of pursue their careers in, this, in these domains. And uh, the research work actually helps a lot in order to uh, you know, learn more about that field and also uh, to sort of manage their time. Like when you're doing an internship and you're doing a full-time MBA, there's a lot of things that goes into uh, play. So you have to plan your time better. You, you need to multitask. You need to be better at time management. And all of that are basically your life learnings as we go ahead. So in order to be very uh, equipped and in order to be very uh, agile and, you know, very adaptable in these uh, in these environments and ever so changing careers. It's very important for students uh, experiences that have. And uh, yeah, so that has been my learning uh, from my internships. And I look forward to uh, my career progression from here. I've learned a lot and I hope to take all of it with me uh, into whichever company that I am currently going to work in. So that will be it. Thank you, Ankita. That was really nice. Uh, I think so a great trajectory to just put it out there in terms of your experiences and what you need to take it further for your future path. Yeah. Um, yes. And of course, we will uh, encourage people to ask questions if they have any. So hang on there till the last, just a few more minutes to go. And our next um, our session or our speakers are going to be from University of Auckland, a student, but unfortunately, we will not have them physically speaking over here, but a recorded version has been shared only because it's kind of late hour in the night there. So we have students kind of talking about their experience. So uh, this is from Christopher Tang, a student who was recently with us in Mumbai doing his internship. So uh, let me just kind of briefly uh, kind of talk about Christopher's background, and then we can take it from the video. Christopher Tang is a third year uh, Bachelor of Commerce, Bachelor of Arts conjoint student of the University of Auckland, uh, majoring in economics, politics, and international relations. Just last month, he completed a six week internship working in India's microfinance sector. Staying in Kolaba, he especially loved his commute every day from CST to Harbor Line to Vashi, where his company was called New Opportunity uh, Company, which was based uh, there. In New Zealand, Chris is an outdoors freak who loves trekking, fishing, and motorbiking. His favorite food used to be cheeseburgers, but now has been changed to Vada Pao. Yeah. Matt, uh, to run the video for us, please. Thank you. Uh, Matt, we cannot hear him. Uh, in person. But uh, nonetheless, I'm here now uh, and I will be there in Hello everyone, namaste, namaste. Uh, good evening to you all. Thank you all so, so much for coming to this event uh, tonight and uh, listening into GCC Summit and um, uh, internship experience. Unfortunately, uh, I wasn't able to be here uh, in person, but uh, nonetheless, I'm here now uh, and I will be there in spirit. So a little bit about myself before I, uh, I kick off. Um, my name is Chris Tan. My name is Chris Tang. I'm a third year economics and politics, uh, politics and international relations student at the University of Auckland. And not so long ago, last month, I did my internship uh, in India, uh, in, in, in Bashi. 
Navi Mumbai at a firm called a New Opportunity or NOCPL. And essentially what I was doing there was I was an intern, um, you know, learning the ropes and, and understanding the business structure, the model of, of, of microfinance, um, what that entails, you know, like and, and how microfinance is done within India. And um, for me, this is this was really, really eye-opening because, you know, here in New Zealand, uh, microfinance isn't uh, that big of a field. Um, it's not that big of an industry. And, you know, me being able to come over and, and gain real-time exposure of, of microfinance, what it was, um, you know, um, uh, how the industry is run, and also just getting to see people's day-to-day -day was so important and, and so valuable for me. Um, I, I usually, when I excel, you know, my internship to other people, I give them a little rundown of what microfinance is. I'm sure, you know, as, as local Indians yourself, um, you guys are, um, are aware of that. Um, essentially, just like giving small loans to women, um, particularly women from rural areas, so they can be uh, empowered and uplifted, uh, as well as providing them, uh, you know, financial literacy skills uh, so that they can be self-sustaining and grow their little businesses, which is really, really awesome. And um, I, I guess what that whole experience taught me was was something that uni couldn't on its own. Um, uh, one one thing that I talk about, which is super important, was was cross cultural communication. How to navigate different cultures, right? You know, like being living in a Western country for you know twenty years of my life, I hadn't really gotten that kind of exposure to you know what Asian cultures like, or you know, like or, 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 or nothing could prepare me for the hecticness of of India or, you know, let alone the local trains, which are, you know, I was catching during uh, peak hours. So that was really, really insightful. Um, so one, yeah, cross-cultural communication is such a huge thing that doing an internship or, you know, working abroad uh, can, can definitely um, can definitely teach you. And it's so important within, you know, like I feel um, the modern workplace, you know, because all the NMCs, all the, all the global networks, all the multinational corporations that, that, that are building up now that's that's so important to be able to know how to navigate these these, these relations know how to you know like uh transcend about uh, borders uh, in terms of uh stakeholders who, you, who who you're talking with uh on a day-to-day -day. it's so important another thing is you know just just being outside your comfort zone you know like I, I found for me um being in a place where I was unfamiliar um didn't know what I was doing a little bit you know like um didn't know the language didn't really know too much about the culture I, I was on the board of, of of being a little bit uncomfortable and you know I'm not sure who said this but um I live by this you know you grow heaps when you know you are at that level of discomfort when you are at a certain like degree of discomfort and and out of your comfort zone that is when you grow and and you know doing an internship abroad and you know like being able to go overseas um you you are able to do that Oh, actually, um, now I think of this, it was when I met with the, the Foreign Affairs Minister of, of New Zealand at the Taj Hotel um, in Mumbai. She told me, Tra traveling is the best teacher, right? You never, you, excuse me, you, you you find out so much about yourself, you, you find out so much about, you know, other people, other cultures, that in the long run, you you find out so much more about yourself as well, what your passions are, what your desires are and you know in the, in the long run in the long run um in the long run that is so important to you um and, and i think that could be so valuable um by doing that and i, I guess the, the last thing is before i wrap this up is, is if you do decide to go overseas or you know if you do decide to get an opportunity like this take it up take it up 100 percent. you know you've got lovely people like naveen uh, who, who look after you on the ground 24-7, you know, like if, if you run into any issues, they have been so, so, so helpful. So, you know, like if you feel uncomfortable, like, oh, I won't be looked after, you have GTC. They they are incredibly amazing. Um, I could go on so much about this, but um, some some of the things that being helping organisers, you know, staying with the prince uh, at his palace in Rajasthan, you know, riding a, a Royal Enfield bullet up Jason Way Fort, all of this was made possible, you know, because... There's been there's such a strong support network on the ground, and and that's so important as well. So you know, go in, do your do your overseas internship, do your have your experiences, but go with an open and 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 a, and a fresh mind, and that's how you get the most out of it. So um, 
I guess, you know, in a nutshell, that, that's all I have to share. Um, a little bit impromptu this, so please bear with me if it's a little bit hiccupy, but, but uh, nonetheless, thank you all so, so much for um, for coming here tonight. And yes, that is, that is, um, that's me clocking out. Thank you. Daniwa, Daniwa. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Matt, I think uh, we will be playing another student's uh, video tomorrow, the first day, first start of the day tomorrow, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll show Tabby's uh, video tomorrow, first thing. Yeah, we have been facing a bit of a technical issue on Tabby's video, so we apologize for that, and we will start off tomorrow by showing her video. Uh, now, I think uh, it was definitely a great, great, intense discussions and information shared by all these eminent people. Uh, Kate, I would over to you to kind of take it over and wrap up the session today with any questions or whatever. Yeah, thank you. Sounds great. Thank you, Naveen. Thank you to all of our speakers and all of our attendees. Um, we've hit our time. Um, we know folks may need to, to peel off for other commitments, but are able to stay back for a few minutes if there's any pressing questions. In the meantime, I'll give a quick overview of what to expect for tomorrow. Uh, we will convene uh, back here in the Zoom room. Um, the Link for tomorrow's session is different than today's, so be certain to look at your calendar or email for that information. And the day today, obviously lots of amazing highlights about how work is changing, how what employers are looking for is changing, how students are preparing for that as well. And really excited uh, to continue that conversation tomorrow with a discussion of what is um some examples to take that theory into practice. Um, I think uh, Chris, our student from University of Auckland really set that up well. He learned by doing what he couldn't be taught at the uni as well too. Um, you'll see here, uh, thank you for sharing that Matt, um, the Padlet and lots of amazing uh, things have been added to that Padlet. Uh, that link will remain live um, for tonight and tomorrow as well. We'll bring that back up. Um, a chance to share thoughts, um, questions, ideas to upvote or like other people's thoughts, questions, or ideas, because this will help, um, you know, sort of build upon the conversations these few days to continue, um, you know, to hopefully have another, um, another summit, more discussions, more events and activities, as well as more experiences and programs um, through, um, and placements through, uh, you know, places such as uh, NMIMS, um, through the network of IIN and also GCC as well. I'll pause there. If folks have questions, um, please feel free to stick around. Otherwise, we will look forward to seeing you tomorrow um, at this 4.30 to 6.30 for day two, where we're going to take these themes around global employability and really travel the world through examples, um, sort of look through different modalities and uh, get a chance to see um, what types of programs, services, and opportunities are out there for students, employers, and supervisors and, as well. So thank you all. <laughs>